For this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how to light a large, long room where we are backlit using the Godox 600, and I'm going to be running with the app for my Olympus EM1 Mark II. So let's get into Lightroom, and I'm going to show you how simple this is. Alright, so here is our ambient shot, and you can notice back in here, it's not lit very well. I'm going to show you a simple method on how to light this space, and we're also going to be lighting this doorway inside this area right here all right and so this is our flash pop above the camera and remember whenever you're doing the flamient method you're gonna always do your ambient shot and the flash pop above the camera always and then you're gonna work in your composites and lighting other parts of the area where it needs light so I love to run with lights off and in this situation this is why we we control the lighting by lighting areas that need to be lit on top of the ambient layer and that flash pop above the camera so then we would move on to around the corner in here and do a flash pop and this is why I love running with that app on the camera so you have a live view of whatever you're doing so you can do your flash pops review it really quickly whether or not you need to move to a different location or increase your flash power or decrease your flash power it just makes your workflow a lot faster when you're on site alright so to light the back of the room here and again I just did an angled shot right here this kinda kicks light back in over on this side and then we just simply move to the other side and I tucked in right behind this beam here to light the other side so when I eliminate myself out of this part of the image we'll have a nice even blend with uh, with those two composites so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold down command and I'm gonna click on each one of my layers here and then right click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. All right, so once all your layers have been loaded into Photoshop, the first thing you want to do is make sure they're aligned correctly. That way you're not having any ghosting if any image is shifted when you touch the camera or whatever. So we're going to make sure the top layer is selected. Hold down shift and click the bottom layer. That'll select them all. Come up here to edit, auto align, and then hit OK. Just make sure auto is selected on your options there and you'll be able to tell okay it shifted a little bit that means they were off just by a little bit so then just click anywhere here to uncheck them so now what we got to do is work on those two composites that we did in the back room first and we're gonna blend those together and then combine them into one image so it'll make our workflow simpler so let's take the eyeball here and toggle off the ambient layer and we're gonna toggle off this one this was the flash pop above the camera we'll get rid of that one and the flash pop over in that left room there and now we can work on these two composites right here by making them one image so select this one select the layer mask command I to invert it come down here make sure white is selected and use your gradient tool and we're just gonna click and drag somewhere over like that and blend those together like that alright so let's select both of these right click and then we're gonna come down here to merge layers and that's just gonna group those into one one layer all right so now we just need to toggle back on this layer we can change this to watch this if you change this to lighten mode all that does is take the brightest part of that image and turns it on for you so we can do the same thing with the flash pop above the camera we're gonna turn that into lighten mode as well and that blends that in with your background layer so now what we can do is check our ambient layer turn that on and we're gonna drop that to 50% and look at that, that feathered that in really nicely. I'm almost considering leaving it like this, except what I'm gonna do is just create a layer mask, make sure black is selected this time, because we're not gonna be inverting it. Now we're gonna be able to paint back in that flash layer that was in here, because that looked a little bit dark to me, and just feather that in like that, making sure to get only the parts that you need. And so if we toggle that on and off, look at that, it toned down the back room there, but gave us enough light to where it was better than the dark ambient layer that we had initially. And you can play with that opacity to see whether or not how much of that flash layer you need to bring back in. And that looks about perfect to me. So now we can right click, come here to flatten image, and I'm going to do my other trick here to getting correct color and checking for any color cast, even though this room looked pretty good. We're going to Command J to duplicate the layer, come up here to Filter, Blur, and then Average. And that's going to smear all the colors together. You can tell. The... Now, if you do this and you have perfect color, so when you do this, this should be a middle gray, and we can tell that there has some red 
tint to this. So an easy way to remove that and to adjust for that perfectly middle gray point, we're gonna come down here and use a curves adjustment layer. Click on the middle eyedropper because that one is going to sample in image to set your gray point. We're gonna click on that and then click anywhere in the image and it's gonna correct for that. So what it does, if you can see this, is, is it is lifting the blues and dropping those reds just a little bit. So when we toggle that first layer off and toggle that on and off, you can see that it did. It eliminated a lot of that red in the image like that. Sometimes, to me, it pushes it just a little bit too much. So again, that's where you wanna play with that opacity slider. And if we toggle that on and off, that still made a drastic change. Got rid of that reddish color cast that was caused probably by the couch and the hardwood floor here when you do your flash. All right, let's flatten the image. Hit OK because we don't need that layer, that duplicated layer. Command S to save it. It's going to bring it back into Lightroom for us. And I'm just going to do my interior final bump and bring that exposure down, adjust it. And that is about all I do. So there you go. All right. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, any of the processes, make sure you leave a comment below. I answer every single comment. And hit that subscribe button. Tutorials are coming out all the time. We'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye-bye.